All right, this is junior high math. Uh, we covered chapter six this past week. Uh, some things to remember out of chapter six. Um, first and foremost would be the uh, two-step equation that we've been solving. That you can have a variable on both sides. I'll start off with a uh, just a regular two-step equation. Let's say we have four x plus two equals. Let's go with 14. Okay, so my first thing that I want to do is make sure my variable is already isolated. It is. X is on the left side. So in the first step that I want to do is subtract 2 from both sides. When I subtract 2 from both sides, it's going to carry that 2 over. What's important to remember is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. That will leave me with 4X is equal to 12. Then I will divide both sides by 4. And that is going to leave me with X is equal to 3. Now it's really important on any of these types of equations that you can check. So our original equation was 4x plus 2 equals 14. So if I take this 3 and sub it in for the x, and then I just evaluate the expression, 12 plus 2 equals 14, 14 is equal to 14, and that checks out and that works. So know that that equation is correct. Um, Another equation to look at would be one where we have a variable on both sides of the equation. So I could have something as easy as 3x plus 1 equals 2x minus 6. My first step now is going to be to get the x's on one side by themselves. So in this situation, I would subtract 2x from both sides since 2x is positive. That will leave me with x plus 1 equals negative 6. Then I will go in and subtract 6 from both sides, and that will leave me, I mean, excuse me, subtract 1 from both sides, and that will leave me with x is equal to negative 7. So now I can also go in and check that, and I strongly suggest on most of these problems that you check them. I'm not going to go through and check each and every one, um, but you can. Uh, the other type that, that we dealt with would be a problem where there is um, decimal. So if I had something like 0.2x minus 0.1 equals, let's say, um, 4. Alright, so what you need to do first and foremost is go through and find out which decimal has the most decimal places. In this situation, it's the tenth spot. So I'd multiply every term in there by 10 to eliminate the decimal. I can't leave the 4 out either. So by doing that, that would give me 2x, that would give me minus 1 equals 40. Now, I'll go through and add 1 to both sides. 2x is equal to 41, divide both sides by 2. x is equal to uh, 41 halves, which we can um, change into 20 and 1 half, or 20.5. But the first step is to go in and see how many decimals. For instance, if I'd have had a .02, then I'd have multiplied everything by 100. You want to make sure that you can clear out those decimals. Um, now, if we have a fraction problem, and I have something like 1 half x plus 2 thirds is equal to, um, let's say, 1 third. Okay, now, my first step on this is going to be to... I'm going to go ahead and subtract two-thirds from both sides to move the two-thirds over, and that'll leave me with one-half x is equal to. Now, when you're subtracting fractions or adding, you must make sure to have a common denominator. In this situation, we already do. So it will be one-half x is equal to negative one-third. All right, now I've uh, got to get rid of the one-half x. Well, x is being multiplied times one-half, so... The opposite of multiplication is division, but when we divide fractions, we flip the second and multiply. So I'll say times 2 over 1, and this will be times 2 over 1. So that will cancel and leave me with x is equal to uh, negative 1 third times 2 over 1. Check to see if you can cross multiply. We can't. So my answer will be x is equal to negative 2 thirds. And that is our answer for that uh, equation. All right, now... The second part of the chapter, uh, beyond solving equations that we had to learn to do, was to find the circumference of a circle. 
Now, the formula that we used uh, or familiar with was C equals pi D. Pi is the uh, equivalent of 3.14, and the method that we use is called the triangle method. And all you do is draw your triangle, draw a T in the middle, put your C at the top, your pi right here, and your D right here. That way, if you're looking for circumference, you cover up the C and you multiply pi times D. If you're looking for the diameter, you cover up diameter and you divide the circumference by pi. And we also know that well, what happens if they have radius? Well, radius is uh, half of the diameter. So that's something to know. In order to, to convert radius to diameter, you multiply by 2. In order to convert diameter to radius, you divide by 2. So if we had a problem where I want to know what the circumference is, and I gave you a radius of 4. Now, what we need to do right off the bat is go ahead and multiply our radius times 2. That'll give me a diameter of 8. Now, I'm looking for circumference, so I cover up my C, pi times D. So circumference is equal to pi times 8. Circumference would then be equal to 3.14 times 8, in which I'm going to get my calculator out and say 8 times 3.14, and it's going to give me 25.2 for my circumference. Not too hard. Um, and that formula works both ways, but I think the triangle method will help you out greatly. All right, the last step is solving a um, inequality. And I'm going to give you one where it has to, to deal with the one rule about inequalities. You work them just like you would a normal equation, except for the fact uh, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you change the direction of the sign. So if I have something like negative 2x minus 1 equals... Uh, excuse me, is greater than 5. My first step would be to add 1 to both sides. That would give me negative 2x is greater than 6. Now I'm going to divide by negative 2. Anytime we divide by a negative number or multiply, we change the direction of the sign, and I get x is less than negative 3. Now to graph that equation, I would come over here. Uh, I'm going to put negative 3 in the middle. To the right, we're going to get bigger, so that would be negative 2. To the left would be negative 4. That's plenty enough. Uh, X is less than negative 3. Since my variable is first, I can go just draw my line the direction, my arrow the direction the, uh, that the uh, inequality is pointing. So this was pointing left. So I'll circle negative 3. I will not fill it in because it's not or equal to. If that it had a line under it, I would fill it in. Simply now just draw to the left, and that's my answer graph. All right, I'll show you one more. Let's say we had 2, and then here I had x plus 3 is greater than or equal to um, 7. All right, so what I'll do then is, I'll, first of all, I'll distribute. So I'll have 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 7. I'll now subtract 6 from both sides. 2x is greater than or equal to 1. I'll divide both sides by 2. I will not change the direction of my sign because 2 is positive. x is greater than or equal to uh, 0.5. I'll come over here. Uh, I'll put a, uh, a 0. I'll put a 0.5 and a 1. 0.5 falls in between 0 and, and 1. I'll circle my 0.5, I will fill it in since it's underlined, or, and that means it could be or equal to. Since the variable comes first and it points to the right, I'll go to the right. That just says that x is greater than or equal to 0.5. Um, that's all of chapter 6. Uh, just deals with solving uh, multi-step equations, finding the circumference of a circle, and uh, solving inequalities.